In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Explain the journal entry for issuing bonds at par and the journal entries for interest payments. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So if we see a discussion question like this or an essay question like this, we got a couple things we can break down. First, uh, if we don't know what where to start or where some of these terms are, we could just start with what a bond is, what interest payments are, and then and then go from there. So obviously what the bond is gonna do is, if from a company standpoint, we are gonna receive payment for the bonds, we're trying to get money, we're trying to finance the company, we're gonna, we're gonna receive payment, and then we're gonna owe back that money. So the bond is gonna be an obligation for us to pay back money. That's gonna be the terms of the bond, both the principal of the bond, the par amount, the face amount, plus interest under the agreements of the bond. Now, of course, then the interest payments are something that we're going to have to pay back. Interest is going to be something like like rent on the money. We got value. We got we got money. We're using the purchasing power of the money that we received and we're going to have to pay back kind of like rent on it, which is going to be interest on it. So that's going to be um, we could at least break down those. And then what does it mean for for the journal entry to be issued at par? Well, there's a couple different ways that there's there's basically three ways that that this could happen that we can issue a bond one uh, we can issue it and have it end up with a discount one two is that we can issue it end up with a premium or we can issue it at par value now par value it just means that that would be the easiest thing to do that would mean that the market if we issued it at par value that means that the market rate is equivalent to the rate on the stated rate on the bond they're the same and so because of that, because there's no difference between the market rate and the rate on the bond, we don't have to issue it for a premium or a discount. The value of the future cash flow payments is equivalent to the par value or face amount of the bond. So that would actually be the easiest type of thing to happen. Now, if, and that would be the case usually if we were just to make the bond, if we made the bond today and we want to issue it today, then we would try probably to make the market rate the same as the stated rate and therefore not have to issue it for a premium or discount. However, if the bond had been made at some date other than the issuing date, then the market rate will probably not be the same as the stated rate, and therefore we would have to issue it at a premium or a discount. So the journal entry then, just to issue the bond, if it's, if it's uh, just gonna be issued at par, and the interest that means the interest rate is the same as the, the market rate is the same as the stated rate, it's a pretty simple journal entry, it's just like a loan. We would debit, uh, we would debit cash. If it was a thousand dollar bond, we get a thousand dollars. We debit a thousand. We would credit a bond payable, just like a note payable, but a bond payable, and that would be for uh, the same thousand dollars that we're going to owe back at the end of the time period. So, and there's no premium or discount if we issued it at par. Then what would happen is we would typically make typical bond would be making periodic payments, possibly semi-annual payments. Uh, that would then be paid according to the, the terms of the agreement. So, and those payments then, again, would be very straightforward journal entries because we wouldn't have to deal with premiums or discounts. We would simply just uh, make the payment uh, for the stated rate on the bond times the uh, face amount of the bond, or uh, and then we, and then if it's a, if it's semi-annual, we divide by two. We would make it for whatever time period is being covered, six months or a year or whatever the time is covered. And then we would just credit cash and debit the interest expense for that amount. And so that would just happen periodically uh, every, every six months until the maturity of the bond. If it was a semi-annual bond, we would just be making payments, crediting cash, debiting interest expense. And then at the end of the bond term, then we would have to uh, pay off the principal of the bond 
which means if it was a thousand dollar bond it would the bond would be sitting on the books the whole time because we're not paying off any of the principal unlike a loan unlike an installment note where we pay off some of the principal we were only paying the interest the entire time at the end of the maturity of the bond we would finally pay off the principal of the bond with cash in this case if it was a thousand dollar bond we would credit cash and we would debit uh, the bond payable and then the bond payable would be gone and the bond would be matured and, and there would be no more bond on the books.